Hi, welcome back to Tea and Forget Me Nots. I'm Rachel and I upcycle furniture and decor. And today I've got a really fun project for you. I had a single dining chair that couldn't be used as part of a set. So I thought, what can I do with it to make it a statement chair and decided on bright, colorful paint. And if that sounds like your cup of tea, let's get into it. So this chair is in reasonable condition, considering that it hasn't been used for a long time. The actual chair is in fine condition, it's just the original finish is peeling away a little bit and just needs a little bit of love and attention, but otherwise it's perfectly solid and good to use. We've got some spider webs going on and a little bit of dirt that needs a good clean, but otherwise we're looking fine. So the first step is to give it a good clean. So I've got some TSP cleaner decanted into this spray bottle. So I'll give it a good once over with that and then use some fresh clean water and a clean cloth to get rid of any of the leftover residue and soap. And then we've got a good surface to start from. Normally I would clean off the soap with my spray bottle just filled with plain water but I've done such a good job of tidying up that I can't find my spray bottle at the moment. So I've just got a different cloth that's clean and dry and a bucket full of clean water and then I'll take off this TSP cleaner so we're ready to sand. And if you've got a really dirty surface it's probably better to even start with vacuuming just so it doesn't gunk up your clean cloth and get rid of any of the big chunks of dirt or dust. Most of this chair just needed a scuff sand just to rough up that surface so it would be prepped well for paint. However, the top of the chair, you can see it was getting a little bit flaky. So I made sure to remove all of that existing finish, particularly on the top of the chair. And the final quick step for the preparation of the chair was to wipe off the sanding dust with a damp, clean cloth. And now we're ready for the fun bit. So clay paint is amazing for blending, so that's what I'm going to use on this chair. And I've got about a lifetime supply of different paint brushes to be able to dip into the different colours, blend them into each other and just see how it looks and play around. And you might notice that the yellow and orange are a little bit messy and that was because there was a slight accident with a cat getting under my feet um, and a bit of a crash and a splash in my shed. Don't worry, the cat was fine. Um, the paint and my shed, not so much. All right, let's start playing. So the first bit, the fun part, was to figure out what colours I wanted to use. So I just opened up all of my different clay paints and decided on what would work nicely together. And in the end, I chose things that were on the white to light blue to dark blue to purple spectrum. One of the most important things about blending is that you're not blending the first layer of paint that you put on. Essentially, you need that base paint layer first because when you're blending the paint on top, once you're moving it around, if it's becoming thinner, then you'll be seeing the colour of the original piece. So in this case, it would be a brown chair. So you want that base layer first. So underneath the blended light blue into dark blue on the top, you would see light blue underneath. So the blend will look more natural. So with this first coat, I wasn't looking for neat lines. It's essentially just getting that first coat on. So in the middle section, I started with the bright cerulean blue. On the left, I've gone with the white of Prairie Dawn. And on the far right is that beautiful purple of Elderberry. I'll list all the colours below so you can see just how many different ones I used. So I also added an additional layer of colour here um, as the transition between this turquoisey teal and this darker blue was a bit too harsh so I've put one in the middle just a blend of those two colours. So I've got my base coat down and I'm going to do an additional layer on top and that is what I'm going to blend to smooth out the transition from the white to the purple. So I've got my wet paintbrush still, which I'll use to add my fresh layer of paint. And then I've got some new dry paintbrushes that I'll do in the middle to feather out that transition. And it's just a case of working back and forth until I'm happy with the finished result. So it might take some time. It's gonna be a lot of playing around and just seeing what I like the look of. 
It's a little bit difficult to see the difference between the darkest blue and the purple of elderberry on the video, but in person it's absolutely stunning. It's the favourite transition on this chair for me. And you will need a lot of brushes on hand if you're going to do as many colours as I am for this one. So I had one brush per colour and then also a blending brush per colour as well that was dry. So in total I had 10 brushes just for the paint. To help with blending the paint I used some water in a spray bottle which just helps keep the paint moving as it's a constant process of trying to reposition it and blend it with the colours on either side. Now occasionally a water bottle can give you splash marks and if you can't blend those out it might be easier to wet the brush rather than the piece of furniture itself to get that extra dampness in the paint. For the finished transition you probably won't end up with much paint that is the true colour that you started with. The majority of each paint section will have a blend to either side of it, so it would only be the extreme edges of the white and the purple that would be probably the pure colour that it started as. So now that I've got the colours that I'm happy with on the chair, I just need to seal it. So I'm going to use Terra Tough, which is designed specifically for this clay paint. So it's a durable top coat and you can use a brush and I just about have one left that doesn't have paint on it. Um, to apply a thin layer and I'm going to do three top coat layers in total. And it also means you need to be careful with what you use to seal it with because if you are too heavy handed you will be dragging that paint off as you are applying the sealer as well. So you need to be using the right type of sealer and also being quite gentle with it. Something like a spray on wax would be a good choice because you're not actually touching the paint with your hands that gives it a nice sealed base as a level of protection. The beauty of clay paint is that it is so flexible for blending but the sealing step is the one that you really need to get right so you don't undo all your hard work. And you just want to pay attention where you have different parts of the furniture that aren't attached to each other that you are lining up where the blends transition. If you've got the time to play around and have a bit of fun, then it is just the perfect paint for blending, getting creative, and just using lots of different colours in a really nice way. So if you have a standalone chair or one that doesn't really fit with anything, you don't need to pass it on, you can always keep it and have it as an interesting and unusual chair for yourself that you can just give a quick makeover to. There's so many possibilities for what you could do. It's a really fun way to get creative and play around. Thanks so much for watching. I had so much fun painting this chair and I think it looks really fun and cute. I'm really going to enjoy having it in my house. If you enjoyed this makeover, please consider subscribing. It makes a huge difference to smaller channels like mine. Until next time, thanks so much. Bye.